morning from the Bullock County Historical Society and also from the Hideaway on Savannah Avenue. Today's tidbit is sponsored by the City of Statesboro, Bullock Solutions, and Clifton Forest and Appraisal Services, great friends of our society. Eastside Cemetery is Statesboro's oldest place in town of permanent rest for our citizens. Recently, BCHS has adopted this cemetery as one of our projects. We are correctly cleaning family plots that no longer have anyone to see to this important task. We use a product called D2. It's the best product that is made and it's the one that is now used to clean places such as Arlington Cemetery in Virginia. The only downside that Bill and I have seen with this product is it takes a little time, must be a little patient. For years, we all cleaned our tombstones with bleach and water and sometimes even a power washer. Had we known the long-term damage we were doing to these very costly monuments to our ancestors, we would have stopped this process immediately. One of the first historical markers that BCHS erected was in Eastside Cemetery. It tells the history and it reads as follows. Eastside Cemetery was established on this site in 1889 in response to citizens' request for a central location for the burial of the dead. Early cemeteries, known as burying grounds, dotted fields of early Bullock County family farms. Majestic magnolias, cedars, and crepe myrtles were planted to mark these sacred sites. With the dramatic growth of the city of Statesboro in the 1880s, citizens sought to establish a city cemetery. Although the city had two prominent cemeteries, the John Wise Burying Grounds on South Main Street and the Neville's Burying Grounds on North Main Street, a group of citizens met on May 17, 1889 to take steps in locating a place for the burial of the dead. They selected this site which today is the city-owned Eastside Cemetery, with an entrance on Northside Drive East. The first citizen of Statesboro to be buried in the new cemetery was Mr. Willie Heddleston, who was born April 17, 1856, and died on March 8, 1890. Other early Burials included a number of bodies moved from the Wise and the Neville burying grounds. On July the 25th, 1956, the city of Statesboro assumed responsibility of beautification of Eastside Cemetery. We have also erected a small historical marker to indicate where Mr. Haddiston was buried here is a picture of the smaller marker. In my opinion, everyone buried in this cemetery is prominent to someone. They are a mother or a father, sister or brother, aunt or uncle, or let's not forget a dear friend to someone. Today, we will talk about a few prominent citizens. Some you will remember, others you may not. We had several past members of the United States Congress buried in our cemetery. R. Lee Moore served as a United States representative from 1923 to 1925. He was a Democrat born in Scarborough, Scriven County, Georgia in 1890. He graduated from the University of Georgia, was a mayor of our city, and also was the spokesperson for the Fabulous 50 that won the bid for the first district agricultural and mechanical school now known as Georgia Southern. Homer Parker was another 
U.S. representative and also a Democrat. He was born in Baxley, Georgia, but graduated from Statesboro High School and then got his law degree from Mercer University in Macon. He served in Washington from 1931 till 1935. He was a mayor of Statesboro. His plot in Eastside is on the list for the next 10 plots to clean. Cold weather and rain have postponed this project a little bit. Prince Preston was born in Monroe, Georgia. He was a graduate of UGA and practiced law in Statesboro. He served in Europe during World War II. He served as a Democrat in Congress from 1947 to 1960 when he was defeated by G. Elliott Hagan in the House of Representatives. James Alonzo Brannon called Lonnie was Statesboro's first mayor. He was born in Bryan County. He was involved with the newspaper, the telephone company, the bank, and so many other firsts that helped our great community in its formative years. Dr. Marvin Pittman was a native of Mississippi and came to serve as president of Georgia Teachers College in 1934. Even during the middle of the Depression, Dr. Pittman dramatically changed the college. He was fired by Governor Eugene Talmadge, who was a staunch segregationist. Dr. Pittman had brought five teachers from the Tuskegee Institute to Statesboro to observe the operation of our practice schools. He was restored to presidency when Ellis Arnold was elected governor. Buried beside Dr. Pittman is his son, Marvin Jr. He was killed by headhunters in the Philippines during the Christmas holiday of 1949. Most of us remember our beloved Emma Thompson Kelly, the lady of 6,000 songs proclaimed by her good friend Johnny Mercer of Savannah and of Moon River fame. Her music was magical and her ear was perfect. My mother studied piano at the University of Georgia under Hugh Hodson, for whom the School of Music is now named. She taught private piano lessons. And one time, Emma came to our home wanting to sign up for piano lessons. Mama just chuckled at Emma and exclaimed, I can't begin to help you improve on your God-given talent, Emma. Well, that was the first and the last piano lesson Emma Kelly ever had. Another wonderful family connection is that George Ross Kelly and my daddy graduated together from Statesboro High School. When George and Emma married, Daddy took them to the DeSoto Hilton for their honeymoon. He also went back to Savannah, picked them up, and brought them home. Emma was made famous by the novel and movie, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. John Barrett gave her an entire chapter. Emma played on Saturday night at cocktail lounges in Savannah, but also played the Sunday school at the First Baptist Church in Statesboro every Sunday morning. I had the honor of nominating Emma for her induction into the Georgia Music Hall of Fame. Thanks for watching. More on Eastside Cemetery in the future. Bye.